Tanisha Souza, and I'm back with another one of the most common investing mistakes people make. If you're not familiar, my name is Tanisha Souza with Tardis Wealth Strategies, and we are talking about all things investing. In particular, I'm doing a short series right now on three of the most common investing mistakes I've seen people make in my 20 years of coaching people on their finances. So uh, in case you missed it, the first day I talked about speculation and how that's very similar to gambling and how people tend to use speculation in different ways, real estate speculation, stock market speculation, crypto uh, and commodities. There's lots of ways that you can speculate in the investing world and it's a very, very risky venture. Some people really make it big and when other people hear about it, they want to jump right in. Uh, it's something that you cannot count on. And as an investor, if you want to be a great investor, you're going to want to have a system and a process that pretty much guarantees you're going to have success time and time again, regardless of the circumstances. The second one I talked about already, I'm not going to go into all the detail, be sure to go back and look at my previous videos if you missed it. But I also talked about accumulation versus investing for income. Um, so people that invest for accumulation are those long-term investors, they're the people that a dollar cost average and things in the stock market, they put their money away for 20, 30, 40 years in the stock market with the hopes that someday they'll be able to live on that. So they're hoping they accumulate millions and millions of dollars in an investment account. And um, now that is a way to invest, but it is a very slow, hard way that doesn't give you a lot of control. And so there is a lot of risk involved in that. And I talked about that in my second video. So today we're going to talk about the third mistake that can be exacerbated um, by those first two. So if you're doing those first two and you utilize this third mistake on top of it, which I see a lot of people doing, so they're actually pile mistakes on top of each other by doing this, is uh, the mistake of getting into debt to invest. Now, what do I mean by that? There is a huge distinction we need to make between getting into debt and using leverage, two totally different things. Now, if you're like me and you don't like debt, and I hope you are because I think, you know, debt really stinks, leverage, on the other hand, is great, can be great if you know how to use it properly. But there is a distinction, and I want to tell you my definition of debt versus leverage. So here's, here's the way that I, I want you to think about it. Leverage is when you borrow money to buy an asset that pays you every single month more than the leverage is costing you. So an example of that might be a real estate investment, right? Where you have a rental property that's paying you, say $600 a month in rental income and your mortgage payment is $300 a month. So you're, you're actually getting 600, you're paying three, so you're netting $300. That's fantastic. That is what we call leverage. Now, on the other hand, if you purchased a property for speculation, like we've done, uh, when you do real estate speculation and you buy a property with the hope that you're going to sell it for more, all of the months or how, for however long it takes you to flip that property, you are actually in debt, right? You have not made any money yet, and hopefully you do, but if you got stuck in a bad time, like during COVID or something like that, you might be stuck with that debt for a longer period of time. But debt is when what you're doing is you are borrowing to buy something that's not making you money, but you hope that it will make you money in the future, like real estate speculation, or if say you borrow to invest in crypto or something, right? A lot of people have done that. They, they borrowed money, uh, you know, some of them mortgaged their homes to buy Bitcoin and things like that with the hope that it will be worth more in the future. That is exacerbating an already very risky venture. Now you're not only speculating and risking the principal, which is usually your savings or you know some other amount that you have on the side. Now you're actually using borrowed money to gamble and that makes it even a lot scarier and a lot riskier. And that's a very common investing mistake. And we see that a lot more now than I've seen in a very, very long time. So investing for accumulation and investing for speculation 
are will be exacerbated if you borrow to do those things because typically those investments are not paying you monthly. Now, if you're doing something, for example, like the income snowball, you're using leverage. If you're doing it correctly, if you're just kind of you know, doing your own thing and you think what you're doing is the income snowball and you're not actually making more money each month than what you've actually, than what you're paying um, on that borrowed money, then you're not doing the income snowball. And if it takes you months and months and months or years to pay off that leverage, then that's also risky too. It should only take you a few months to pay off the leverage at any given time and uh, that way you're, you're even in less risk. So again, an example of that rental property, like I mentioned to you, if you, now if you have a rental property, on the other hand, that pays you $600 a month in rental income, but you are paying $1,000 on your mortgage, that is not the right use of leverage. In fact, it's a really bad use. And I would even say it's not even leverage. You are in debt because what you're, you're paying more on that borrowed money than what you're getting in from the investment. And that's another really common mistake. And that's for someone that's investing for the long term. For someone that's investing because they hope that someday that property will be worth more. Not not to flip it, but they think that, you know, it'll gain value, it'll be worth, you know, 200, 300,000 more in the future. So those are those long-term investors which would be similar to people that invest in the stock market over the long term. And what they're doing is they are paying someone to live in their rental property until one day it's worth more and perhaps they can sell it. So again, it's kind of that pie in the sky, I hope one day, maybe. But I want you to consider this. Think about in 2008, 9, and 10 in that crisis where there were a lot of people caught with their pants down and there were a lot of other people who succeeded even when the market tanked. Why? because they had regular monthly passive income coming in from their rental property or whatever investment they had that was paying them every single month. Guess what? Even when people are losing their homes, they always needed a place to live. So when people uh, you know, got rid of their homes or, or they lost their homes in foreclosure, they went to go rent. And so people that owned rental properties, even when the value of their real estate went down, they were able to not only survive but thrive during that um, the Great Recession simply because they were investing for passive income and they used leverage rather than getting into debt where they, the payments on the mortgage was more than what they were getting in the rental and their rental income. So as you can see, not understanding the difference between debt and leverage is a very big mistake. It's number three and can be exacerbated when you're actually investing for accumulation or for speculation on top of it. So always invest. If you're gonna invest with any kind of borrowed money, make sure that you're using leverage. You're getting way more than what that leverage costs you, eliminating or reducing your risk significantly. And it's even better if you can pay off that leverage in very short chunks of time. If you like this video, please smash that like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, be sure to press the little bell so that you know whenever a new video is posted. Uh, leave us a comment, let us know what types of investment mistakes you've made or you have not made. And we look forward to seeing you on the next video, bye. Thank you.